Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, joined by attorney Alexander Palomara, and we're going to talk about a Cigna slash New York Life long-term disability insurance success story that Alex recently had on a long-term disability denial case that you won at the appeal level. So I want to talk about the background of the case, what you had to do, the strategies you put in place, and then provide some tips for people so that they could hopefully avoid denial and also maybe pick up some tips about how to do an appeal appropriately for a um, New York life disability denial. Definitely. So my client um, worked as a consultant. He worked for Accenture, which is a big global Fortune 500 company. Um, he worked there for a few years, made a very good living. Um, everything was going great. He, he had a great job, great life. But unfortunately, in early 2018, he was actually assaulted. He was actually out for, for a night out with friends, and he was assaulted, and um, spinal cord injuries, head injuries, like a severe assault, you know? So luckily his employer provided his, him and his other co-employees with um, disability insurance coverage, and at the time it was with the Cigna, and we all know Cigna's uh, recently been bought out by New York Life. Right. But luckily he had coverage under short-term and long-term disability insurance policies. He applied for both, and initially his claim was approved. So first he got short-term disability for the full six months, it went to long-term disability, initially approved, and they paid it for about almost a year, almost a year and a half, a little bit over a year, almost a year and a half. But unfortunately, they ended up denying his claim. And right before they denied his claim, they sent him to a independent medical examination um, provider, a doctor, you know, down in his area, um, occupational medicine doctor. And this doctor, you know, did a 20-minute exam, came back saying he had the ability to sit unrestricted, reach unrestricted, do this, that, and the other unrestricted, and they denied his claim. So in a 20-minute exam, he could determine that the person could sit for 40 hours a week with continue with reasonable continuity? Definitely. Like sometimes the IME doctors are real and actually do a, a full comprehensive exam and sometimes they, they don't seem to. In this case, reviewing, reviewing the report it says one thing, talking to your client says another thing. You know, sometimes they, they, the consultant's reports, um, they kind of stretch the truth, you know, uh, but the actual examination itself was less than 20 minutes. Now you said this was a known doctor that you've seen on many other files as well that Cigna has relied upon in the past. For sure, and I actually have seen other insurance companies rely upon this doctor as well, um, and I create a list. I mean, I see, sometimes, um, for the most part, I see, uh, you know, new names, you know? I don't see the same names over and over again, but I, there's, a, there's a handful of names, maybe 10 names that I see on a regular basis. And how many claims am I doing? There's probably thousands upon thousands of disability insurance claims. The fact that I see the same names over and over again kind of shocks me. You know, and there's so many doctors out there. So some of these doctors, <clears throat> they're, they're making a good living just doing either independent medical examinations or doing uh, independent consultative reports for the insurance companies. So I see the names and I, and I always compare their reports with their past reports so I can catch them in an aha moment. They're just recycling stuff and I've done that in the past as well. Right. But this doctor, I've seen, they've actually sent a couple of my clients to him for an independent medical examination. And for the most part, the it's always the same result. It's always the same result. It's always supportive of the insurance company's goal of denying the claim. So unfortunately, they denied my client's claim. He came to me and he hired us to represent him with the appeal. And the first thing I did was got a copy of the claim file. I got a copy of this independent medical examination report. I got a copy of all the other reports that the insurance company is relying upon. And I, I figured I had to figure out what holes I needed to fill and what shortcomings there were in, those, in that IME report and whatnot so I can plug them with my appeal and arguments in my appeal. And so in this particular case, what was your exact strategy, meaning what did you end up presenting in your disability appeal letter to New York Life? So I talked with my client to figure out what's going on with him, you know, and beyond his, his physical injuries, he also had a head injury. So he has physical injuries, he's in pain every single day, he uses, you know, he, he, um, he uses a cane to get around, oh, wow. and he has cognitive issues as well. So this is a severe assault that he, that he suffered from. So I knew I had to prove that he had physical disability. I knew I had to prove that he had cognitive disability. So what I did was, first thing I did was reach out to his treating providers to drum up more support from them, the people right. that actually seeing him on a regular basis. It was easy. I reached out to his providers. They're more than supportive to fill out attending physician statements. Some of them wrote letters of support indicating what they saw from him on a regular basis. I got all their medical records. I got all the most recent MRIs, uh, any other diagnostic testing I can get my hands on. I got it. And then I sent my client to what's known as a functional capacity evaluation. So I sent him to a functional capacity evaluation, also sent him to a neuropsychological evaluation as well. Functional capacity evaluation said he's unable to work any occupation, can't even do a sedentary job. Neuropsych evaluation showed that he has severe cognitive difficulties. Um, 
I put that all together in an appeal, put it on a silver platter to the insurance company, gave them all my arguments. I told them all the shortcomings of their IME doctor's report, their, consult their uh, independent consultant's report, and showed them all the medical documentation proves that my client is disabled from his own occupation and any occupation. Um, it gave, I mean, Cigna New York Life had no, no other option but to, to reapprove the claim. At first, I thought they actually were going to deny it because they sent a, um, an updated consultative report, um, but I plugged the holes of that report as well. So, so they did an initial review. They hired another doctor, during not to examine during the appeal, not right. during the appeal, not to examine him, but to review the records. And what did that report say? Essentially the same thing, that he had the ability right. to, to sit full-time. If he can sit full-time, he can do his job as a, uh, as a consultant. And there's just no way, and, I mean, the doctor was overlooking so much, and I pointed that out to them, saying, listen, he's just overlooking this, that, and the other, and, and they agreed with us well, ultimately. Well, it's tremendous that at that point, because usually when you get that report and it's negative, it's basically like it's just they're going through the motions of sending you this report saying, look, hey, here's what our doctor found and our doctor disagrees still, thinks the client's not disabled, then you write something back, and usually what they do is they send it back to that doctor, which is why it's usually a joke, because what is that doctor gonna say then? He's gonna say, I don't know, I looked at, what, I looked at their arguments, I still disagree because of these reasons. And so sometimes you do waste your time responding to their consultative report, but in this case, I knew how to respond, because I, I knew this doctor was just incorrect, oh, he overlooked so much, that I think when they probably sent it back to the doctor, he might have said, Oh wow, I did not see that. Or maybe he was not presented that information. You know, maybe right, the insurance company. Right. So that's a great point because we never know specifically what they gave to their doctor because their doctor sometimes writes, "Oh, I looked at this, this, and that." But sometimes they they just say, "I reviewed the records." Right. We don't know what the records are. We don't get a copy of what was sent to that consulting doctor, and then they write back. So in this case, you probably you realize astutely that there is some stuff missing here that I think is worthwhile to say, "Hey, if you knew this." There's no way that you could find that this person could go do any type of job whatsoever. Right. So sometimes it's a strategy. Sometimes when they send you, when you file an appeal and they send you an updated report that's not favorable for your client, sometimes you just want to just not even respond to them because you don't want to give them your arguments for your lawsuit, for your potential right. motion for summary judgment because they're just going to shoot them down and they say, no, judge, we, we already considered that. So you have to definitely have a... Um, yeah, you have to figure out what's in the best interest of your client or your claim. Sometimes you don't want to respond to those reports, and sometimes you do. I mean, you always on appeal, you always want to respond to it. But if it's after you filed your appeal, sometimes you just don't even respond and to so it. And so we deal with that all the time. And one of the advantages here is I know we got together and reviewed everything, and we were able to say, you know, bounce it off the multiple disability lawyers that we have here and say, what do you think? What do you think? And kind of on this one, more often than not, we say, no, screw them. We don't want to give them an opportunity to even further improve their review of the file, which would then make it harder for us if we had to file a lawsuit. But this one, we really felt like they really were missing stuff and it should be responded to. So there's not a do this, this, and that on every single appeal. Every appeal is custom, and the strategies and techniques that you put into it are a work of art with every single one that has to be strategically done with a mindset of what happens in the next stage if we don't win. And that's where people who, who don't do appeals all the time and don't litigate these disability insurance lawsuits, especially claimants who do it on their own, they don't know what to expect at the next level. And you have to know that in order to really do a good appeal. I mean, I see people hire attorneys that are not disability insurance specialists. Yeah. So they do an okay job with the appeal and the claim gets denied and, we're st and they come to us for the lawsuit and we're stuck with the file as it is. Because right. under most ERISA claims, or under all ERISA claims, once the final denial is issued, the claim file is closed. So we're stuck with that. You know, so the, the, the appeal is the most important thing. You can't just hire anybody off the streets to do an appeal for you. So if you have a New York Life disability or Cigna disability denial, feel free to call Alex or myself. What we'd love to do is immediately review your denial letter, let you know immediately what we think is the best plan of attack, what we think we could do for you, what it would cost for you to represent with us, and most importantly, what we think are your chances of success in winning benefits. So no matter where you live in the country, we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you. Hi, I'm Gregory Dell, the managing attorney of Dell Disability Lawyers, and I hope you find the video you just watched helpful. We put these videos out all of the time, and we'd love if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Beyond our videos on our YouTube channel, we also have lots of information available on our website at diattorney.com, and we encourage you to come to our website 
The goal is, is that we want you to be educated about the disability insurance process. And when you get to our website, you'll see that we have information all about your specific disability insurance company, your occupation, and your medical condition. And we've designed our website such that you can easily search our website to find things that you may specifically be looking for. Now at our website, we have thousands and thousands of pages of information, hundreds of videos that you can search, plus we're building a section of reviews of all the disability insurance companies, and we have the Ask Our Lawyer section where you can go ahead and ask us any questions that you may have. Now we realize that you may not need us right now, but you may need us in the future to help you with your disability claim, and we think one of the best ways to keep in touch is by clicking the button below and subscribing to our channel. And most importantly, again, no matter where you live in the country, we're always available. Just go ahead and give us a call. We're happy to discuss your claim and let you know immediately if we can help you.